Alrighty, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to another road reflection. We're doing it. We're getting into it. How are you guys? I'm doing okay. Uh, we're, we're, we're back in the old format. I know I didn't do one last week. Uh, but last, it's been <laughs> it's been a fun, crazy time. Uh, a lot has happened. A lot is happening. Uh, good things, positive things, um, new things, new, 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 interesting, fun challenges for, to, um, to kind of, uh, contend with. I don't even think it's really contending with it. It's just new additional stuff within my schedule to add to, uh, and, um, kind of take into account and balance a little bit more there's like a little bit a couple of other new things to to juggle around uh and that's okay and that's good that's uh that these are all these are all positive things that are happening in my life so um you know it takes a little bit of an adjustment time so so some of the live streams and and things of that sort um have uh decreased over the last month or so especially uh oh i definitely went the wrong fucking way on <laughs> doing the video is a mirror, you guys. So it's it's literally like an opposite thing. Uh, so, but so I and I just screwed up my hair. Not important. Dumb dumb thing to complain about. Um, but yeah, I, you know, some some good interesting things have been happening. Uh, positive interesting things have been happening in my personal life. Some of you might be privy to some of that. Um, but just you know, as sort of. Uh, um, a minor update. I know some 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 folks that regularly watch the channel might know that I'm going through a divorce, and that is completed. That's over. Uh, the divorce was finalized, uh, and uh, and that's a big, fun, exciting thing. So you know, so we're doing a celebration, starting a new relationship, um, getting a, you know a, a sort of a little side gig um, to uh, supplement some income. Uh, cause I do fall within the cracks of virtually every fucking thing that they've set up. Uh, so I don't even really know if I'm going to be eligible for any, any of the, the stimulus stuff. Um, and quite frankly, I'm, 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 I haven't even really looked into what the stimulus stuff is that is on the list of things to do. But, um, you know, uh, to kind of give you guys a little bit of an insight, a little bit of a, uh, behind the scenes, a peek behind the curtain, if you will, you know, if you want to. Look right behind there. It's just a, it's just not, it's nothing. Uh, there are blinds back there and they were backlighting me a whole bunch. So I've got this curtain to, to anyway, that's not, whatever. <laughs> um, what, what I was doing with, uh, with my week, how I was kind of doing it. And I, and I know I've kind of given the update a couple different times, but when, when this whole thing started, I was on, we, everybody was unsure about how long this was going to be. Some people thought it was going to last a couple of weeks. You know, everybody would kind of stay quarantined and stay at home and do all that kind of stuff for, you know, two to four weeks maybe. Some states were thinking about eight. And, you know, as the days went on, literally like within the first couple of days of the this pandemic situation, I lost like eight weeks worth of gigs and then it became 10 weeks, 12 weeks. And, I'm, you know, now it's like 2020 is not uh, going to be a touring year any anymore you know the the first qu maybe quarter of the year was a touring year and then now it's like yeah we're not going to get back on the road for a while and i wrote a whole piece about about that um and pivoting into this digital landscape and i basically did videos every single day videos like the one that you're watching um and, and specifically even in this format that you're watching right now right so that was uh, i mean i did them every day and then I kind of started taking Thursdays off to specifically work on my podcast so that I had I, I wasn't overdoing it on, on Thursdays. Um, so then it became six days a week. Uh, so, but I was putting out content, you know, every day I was putting out content seven days a week. Uh, it was a lot. I gave myself some stress migraines. <laughs> uh, definitely, definitely did that. And then I wanted to find some way to perform and write because... These are fun and they're loose and they're ranty, but really where I kind of, um, I think like my forte or my niche or whatever it is, I like to write. I have a writer brain. I know that, you know, I have this kind of problem solving writer's brain um, and I enjoy writing and I enjoy performing the things that I write and kind of using that as 
sometimes is a way to improv out uh, and, you know, be a little bit looser with some stuff. So I gave the Zoom thing a try, and there, and there were some wonderful people that came out to the test show, uh, gave some feedback to that on that show. And that eventually became, you know, uh, the run of the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which is now going forward uh, be, is like the way that I am going to be earning an income. And, and since June, because June was the month that I kind of did them every Friday, um, and then... You know, because it's July and August, because it's the summer months, and there are fringe festivals that I'm gonna be, uh, that I'm involved in. I'm not doing them every Friday, but I'm doing them most Fridays. So in July it was only two. In August it's going to be three. But I've got the Providence Fringe coming up. I've got the St. Louis Fringe coming up, and then I'm pretty much going to be doing them um, all throughout September. What I might do is I might take um, I might take the last last Friday of every month off, um, just so I don't burn out. Uh, you know, I kind of need a week to just recalibrate, d touch up on a couple of things and, you know, just take a refresher. Um, so, you know, when, when I do the bulk ticket purchase, I might have one where you can just buy tickets for all of the September shows, or you can buy tickets to all of the October shows, or you can buy tickets to two months of shows together and it's going to be a little bit more math uh, because I am uh, trying to continue doing this donation thing. Um, so I'm going to be looking for, you know, grassroots organizations and um, individuals, uh, journalists, uh, venues and so on and so forth to donate money to to help people out uh, throughout this pandemic. Uh, my week was essentially Monday is all research day. It's the full day that I sit and do research. Uh, Tuesday is my full writing day. I, I will sit and do a full day of writing. Um, and then Wednesday, Thursday was uh, both my podcast days, but that's also my editing days. And then Friday is the day of the show. So, you know, I would put together the presentation for the show because I have visuals and video and stuff like that that I use. Um, and I put together the show. So... Um, I have had to make a couple of adjustments to that. And then Saturday, Sunday would be the, the live stream days where I would do videos like this, right? Um, and I know this one's not live. It's not really a premiere or anything like that. But uh, I do encourage you guys to comment. I do encourage you guys to like, share, and do all of the regular things that you do. Uh, the change now is I do have a side gig that I have to kind of accommodate for with, on Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, you know, new relationship. Uh, and all of that stuff is like all of the, there, there's there's a work side gig personal life kind of balance that needs to be achieved and that's part of the reason why you haven't seen a lot more live streams from me but i do have a bunch of live streams planned that are that are going to be um that, are, that i'm going to try to do over the next uh few weeks essentially and so you know if you guys are if you guys are cool to to be patient with that that's uh, you know much appreciated I, i'm still putting out at least four to six videos a week, um, you know, so so there is a bunch of stuff coming up, um, and, I, and I've mentioned this a few times as well, uh, and, and then we're going to jump right into the, into the, 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 the meat of the, this uh, video here, is, um, you know, um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be uploading a bunch of this stuff to Rockfin, and I'm probably going to be doing a live stream on on Rockfin, uh, possibly on Sunday nights. Uh, I, I haven't fully figured out that yet. I, I might, I'll, I'm going to try to work that out. I'm building the I'm building the Rockfin channel right now. Um, Rockfin is a uh, blockchain cryptocurrency video site. Basically, you get you go on the site and you can watch stuff for free. They're on a freemium model, so. Everybody that's on Rockfin has free content that anybody can watch at all times. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing, right? So the segments, um, you know, the independent episodes of Four Full of Noodles, uh, a couple of comedy cl uh, clips here, the dispatches, will be free. Um, segments from interviews will be free. The longer stuff, like videos like this where, you you know, it's, it's an hour long or the... Uh, full compilation of uh, Forkful of Noodles. Like, you know how I kind of part them out. It's like part one of four on per one particular topic, like when I put them all together. Those videos will be part of the premium package. My full stand-up comedy um, video specials, 
will be on, on the premium uh, side of things. So how do you get the premium stuff? All you have to do is become a subscriber on Rockfin. It's one $10 a month payment. That's it. And, and then basically after that, if you subscribe to me uh, as, you know, like if you subscribe to my page and then you subscribe to Graham Elwood's page or Ron Placone's page or Kim Iverson or whoever it is, um, you know, the, the, we all get a revenue share out of that. You know, e each person gets a certain percentage based on uh, subscriber retention and viewership and new subscribers and things of that sort. So uh, it's said, realistically, all, all, all you have to do for something like Rockfin is if you enjoy this content, if you if you are an avid watcher of things on YouTube and things of that sort, and you're kind of tired of the suppression, if you're tired of you know, the, your, your, your favorite content creator not being able to make ad dollars because of the ad apocalypses and things of that sort. This is essentially a way uh, that you can help your favorite content creators out, the ones that are on Rockfin, uh, which are primarily political and also MMA. It's a weird blend, but that's fine. That's what is, is getting popularized in, in that network right now. Um, they, all you have to do is subscribe and watch. That's it. There's, I mean, it's it's literally like Netflix for content creators. It's kind of what it ends up becoming, um, and it's completely democratized. There is no like uh, major censorship, you know, and you get to watch the people that you want to watch, and your feed is exactly that. It's exactly who you want it to be. Um, and, and, and the content that you want to see rather than YouTube trying to feed you random shit or YouTube trying to say, well, you watch a lot of political stuff. Well, here's something completely different, you know, to keep you off of this sort of uh, that sort of political stuff. So uh, keep an eye out for that. I will probably make a, a, a bigger, longer video about all that and kind of take you guys through some of the stuff that's on my channel. Um, that's going to be coming up. I've got something fun planned with uh, my friends, uh, Jay Jackson and Katrina Coleman coming up. Um, and I'm going to be putting up some of the interviews that I've recorded, uh, for Taboo Table Talk. So, you know, there's, there's some fun, interesting stuff coming from me, hopefully, hopefully fun, interesting stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, I am, I am trying to balance a bunch of new stuff happening in my life. Oh, and, and all of this stuff really just started happening like last couple of weeks. So it's a little bit of an adjustment to, to try to regain that balance. And, but it's a good thing. It's a, it's a good thing. So th that's sort of my check-in. Uh, I know it's kind of been a little bit since I've done a check-in like that. So, uh, so without any further ado, I want to tr start getting into the meat of, uh, uh, of this video. So uh, I had somebody uh, that watched a recent video of mine um, about uh, why I can't vote for any blue, right? Like I'm, I'm not an any blue will do kind of guy. I'm not a Democrat. I've never said that I'm a Democrat. I'm really at this point don't have a real party affiliation. Um, I think the Green Party gets close, but there's some chicanery going on back there in the um, in the in the way that they selected Howie Hawkins. Um, and I've gotten, you know, I've gotten a lot of, uh, mixed messages, um, from supporters of the Green Party. And, and I will say that I'm a supporter of the Green Party too. I, I want there to be more parties in America. Anyway, uh, so I, I, I've gotten a lot of shit for this whole, like, I'm not going to vote for Joe Biden because I don't want to vote for two of the, the, the lesser of two rapists, essentially. Um, and I'm not a Democrat. I criticize the Democratic Party just as much as I've criticized the Republican Party. In my younger days, that's all I did. I criticized the Republican Party a, a fuck ton because when you're getting into politics uh, and when you're getting into political comedy, it's easy to make fun of the Republicans. They're fucking crazy, right? Especially once they started moving like clo and cl more into like the Tea Party realm. And, um, you know, so I was getting a lot of shit. But there were a couple of people that were watching it that were that were like, cool, I get what you're saying. I might disagree with X, Y, Z point, but that's cool. And, uh, you know, I would say out of the amount of people that commented on this, uh, on this video, I would say like maybe 
anywhere between 7 and 10% of the people were actually willing to have some level of discourse. And I've, I've done a bunch of tweets and made a bunch of statements and what, what have you on it. And I'll probably write some stuff about it because that's kind of how I process and channel uh, all of that stuff. But one of the people that, that wanted to have um, a conversation and enjoyed the video uh, was curious about the sources that I use for, uh, for, for you know, my, um, my videos that I do here, Forkful of Noodles, The Dispatch, Taboo Table Talk, all that sort of stuff, right? They were, they, they, were, they were like, what sources do you use? And I've talked about a bunch of them. I've talked about a lot of the sources that I use on, this, uh, on these videos, and, and I usually have the sources put up on the, on the video itself. Um, but I think they were just curious, you know, like, where do you go? What are, what are some things that I should pay attention to? Because sometimes when you're watching a video like this and I pull up a thing, like, the logo is not prominent enough on the screen for long enough that you can be like, oh, that's that website. Or, you know, I might say, like, oh, we're, we're going through a payday report or whatever, right? So, and, then, and then it's like it's not clear uh, or you mishear it and you don't know where it is. So... I figured I would uh, respond to that individual uh, and do a video about the sources that I like. Some of the independent, um, independent true lefty journalists that are out there that uh, I support, that I uh, read and look into, uh, that I trust. Um, you know, so uh, to start with, I've, I've, uh, especially over the last couple months, Mint Press News has been putting out some really great stuff. Um, they do a lot of stuff about American imperialism. They have really great articles about mutual aid. Uh, my friend Ellen Goldfield writes for them. Um, uh, Manar Muhawish is the chief editor. Uh, she also has a podcast called The Mint Cast, uh, which um, I have fallen behind on listening to. Uh, I will be honest about that. Uh, my friend Eleanor Goldfield was just on there. I listened to that one because I used that as a source for... Um, my most recent Citizen Revolution uh, show about West Virginia. Uh, and that video will be coming out in, in a few weeks here. So um, Mint Press News, I highly recommend them. Um, they also have really great pieces about a lot about foreign policy and um, you know what's, what's going on overseas, about militarism and imperialism. Um, they have a lot of uh, great coverage about uh, the protests. Uh, they're based in Minneapolis, so there's a lot of coverage about uh, defunding the police and all that kind of stuff. So highly recommend checking out Mint Press News. Highly recommend checking out the Mint cast. Um, I had the distinct pleasure and honor of having uh, Manar Mahawish on uh, my podcast uh, on Taboo Table Talk. And if you haven't listened to that episode, uh, please go and listen to that episode. The link to my podcast is in the description of uh, all of the videos that I put out. So... Um, no excuses there uh, to, to not listen to it. Uh, the next is The Gray Zone. I, I very much enjoy The Gray Zone. Uh, they are, um, again, sort of these lefty socialist, kind of lefty socialist folks. Um, they, they have done a lot of in-depth coverage on uh, Venezuela specifically, uh, uh, on Iran, what's going on with the, with the, with, with, um, the conflicts in Iran. Uh, I watch uh, the, there's specific journalists within the gray zone that I follow pretty closely. Uh, Aaron Mate being one of them. Aaron has a fantastic show called Pushback. Um, he's the, he's he's basically broken Russia Gate. He he proved that Russia Gate was a hoax. Uh, he wrote an article on the Nation. He's done several videos about it. He's had debates with uh, pro Russia Gate people, including CIA analysts that have come out and said. Um, you know, well, Black Lives Matter and movements like that are specifically, um, you know, uh, Russian to sow discord in, uh, in the American landscape. And like, we really don't have uh, a problem with race. Like, and, and Aaron pushbacks on them, which is why the show is called Pushback. Um, that's on the YouTubes. They're, they're, they're on the YouTubes there. Um, I really, really like Aaron's work. I really, really like the way that Aaron, uh, the, the perspective that Aaron brings to the table. Uh, one of the things that I do need to dig into, and um, this might possibly be like a bigger dispatch type of, uh, type of thing to cover, um, is the uh, OPEC whistleblowers. 
that basically have come out and said that what happened in Duma in 26, uh, 2017, April 2017, I believe, which, you know, had uh, Trump send out fighter planes and um, essentially blow up a, a air base or an air strip, landing strip or something like that. I, I'm sorry, I'm not uh, getting the words right on that, but uh, he basically, you know, sent a bombing raid to, to Syria and the UK and, and, and France was involved as well. Uh, and that was all based on uh, Assad gassing his own citizens in Duma. And you had CNN reporters that were like tasting poisonous gas. And they're like, oh, you can taste the poison. It's really, can you, it's palpable in there. Um, well, Aaron, Aaron Mate on his show Pushback has had several whistleblowers. He's had um, uh, professors and experts come on his show and essentially prove uh, why this was kind of like another WMD type of um, type of lie to push more uh, militarism and push more troops into into Syria. That's something I need to dig into, get the specifics of it, uh, because he's done a lot of coverage on that. Uh, another person that's uh, done a lot of coverage on that is Anya Parmpil. She has a show called Red Lines as part of uh, the Gray Zone. Again, done a lot of work with uh, Venezuela, done a lot of work with Iran. Um, really a lot of foreign policy type stuff. They do some electoral stuff. Um, they've done a lot with the Black Lives Matter movement as well, the defund the police movement as well. And these are all, these are all folks that are not in the corporate mainstream sphere. Um, so, you know, you are going to get a more in-depth coverage from them. They're not here. They're not particularly interested, interested in providing you with a 30 second sound bite. You know, they are interested in giving the objective story and delivering as much of the truth as possible. Recently on my channel, I did a, a whole thing about how uh, Wikipedia has uh, denounced things like Mint Press News and The Gray Zone as like viable sources because they don't fall fall into the agendas that Wikipedia wants to put out there. So. And I have used Wikipedia as a source before, but, you know, and I always kind of was a little like, okay, we got to double check some things and let's look at where things are coming from and so on and so forth. But now it's like you really got to take it with a grain of salt because if it doesn't fit this like neoliberal fucking and Ayn Rand, you know, libertarian, pro-free market, pro-capitalist ideology, then they're going to skew the narrative on their site because that's specifically what they're going to do. Um, and the Gray Zone is one of those. Uh, Gray Zone and Press News have been have basically been said that they're not um, they're not reliable sources, blah, 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 whatever, right? Um, Another writer on uh, the Gray Zone that I enjoy a lot is Ben Norton. Uh, ben Norton has done um, a lot of in-depth stuff on uh, Julian Assange. He did, he broke uh, an amazing story uh, about how Julian Assange was being spied on, and uh, Sheldon Adelson was was involved in um, in paying essentially for for spying on Julian Assange uh, while he was in the Ecuadorian embassy, and that's illegal to do especially because you're spying on him meeting with his lawyers uh, to talk about this espionage case anyway. Uh, Max Blumenthal, another fantastic writer uh, for, for The Gray Zone as well. He's done a lot of stuff on Venezuela. He was down in Venezuela. He got an interview with Nicolas Maduro. Uh, so, you know, and corporate media is really interested in, in going down there and talking to these leaders. They are just going to kind of push this narrative and uh, skew the history and skew what's going on, call it, you know, demonize the word socialism, um, mi misappropriate communism, and, uh, and, and sit there and, and say these are all uh, the same thing as, uh, uh, you know, some kind of left-wing authoritarian state. And, um, you know, it's like things like Venezuela is, the guy gave food to people during this pandemic and while America is putting economic sanctions on on the country so that they can't get the shit that they need he's still able to 
feed his people and cancel rent and mortgages and ensure that people have health services. And in America, it's like we're struggling to do any like a bunch of those things. Uh, so but that's the country that we're going to demonize. Right. Because they don't follow with our economic philosophies. Uh, they don't follow this free market laissez faire, you know, let it determine what it is. And we always have to save the markets because the market is is the ultimate, you know, form of religion in America um, is that's they don't. So they have to demonize these countries because of that. Uh, and you have Gray Zone and Minpress News out there that are going to cover the story objectively. Like, if Maduro does something shitty, they're not going to be like, well, we're going to forget about it. No, they, they talk about that angle of it as well. Um, because they're good fucking journalists, and that's what they're, you're supposed to do. Um, another one that I, uh, that I particularly like is The Intercept. Uh, with Glenn, uh, Glenn Greenwald, Jeremy Scahill, those are those are the folks from The Intercept. I enjoy The Intercept a lot. Um, I think it's a it's a good uh, paper. Although you do have to watch who you're reading on there because you do have some Russia Gators that are part of that. So The Intercept is an interesting uh, publication because they have uh, very deferring, like I mean, politically different voices just all within their own paper. So like James Risen will will do pro Russiagate stories and then Glenn Greenwald will do uh, like an anti Russiagate story and be like, here's why James Risen is wrong and stuff like that. So you just have to kind of keep an eye on, on, on that sort of stuff. But one of the things that you know I, I do I want to address is the blue leaks that came out and that a lot of that information is coming from um, you know the intercept. I, I use them as a source quite often. Uh, I like them. I think they're a good source. They do some really good in-depth uh, coverage. They covered a lot about Julian Assange. They cover a lot about whistleblowers um, because, uh, you know, uh, Edward Snowden gave the NSA whistleblow, uh, whistleblown documents to Glenn Greenwald, which then that story got spun around in, in sort of the mainstream as, well, he could have given it to, to Chinese spies. And it's like, but he didn't, though. And they're like, well, he could have. And I was like, yeah, I mean, potentially, I think we have the potential. Like, uh, you know, who doesn't like fucking you could have a 10 year old that has the potential to set a building on fire, but they don't like. So, you know, so they demonized him on the potential of something that he didn't even do. Um, so they do a lot of coverage on whistleblowers. I like I like them for that sort of stuff, especially um they, they usually are pretty solid on that and pretty fair on their reporting of that. Uh, something, and we'll see this later in this video as well, is Payday Report. They do a lot of coverage on strikes. A lot of coverage on strikes. They're, uh, they're primarily one of the major sources that I go to on like what's going on with strikes right now. What's going on with the labor movement right now. Um, another one, too, is In These Times. Uh, it covers a lot about the labor movement as well, and I've used them as a source. Uh, especially in the coming videos, there's there's going to be a video about the general strike movements from the Citizen Revolution shows, uh, and uh, I think it's going to be a three or four part four parter. And I basically um, like in these times is a pretty big source that I use for that. So uh, then we have uh, uh, Eleanor Goldfield, excellent source. Uh, she writes for Mint Press News right now. Um, and, uh, she does her own independent journalism. She does a lot of organizing, creative activism. Uh, she does a, a lot of stuff with Lee Camp, uh, common censored podcast, which I'm super behind on. Uh, they do a live stream every Friday during, you know, kind of during my citizen revolution shows, but whatever, I'll, 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 I'll let Lee go on that. I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll forgive him on that. <laughs> uh, just giving him shit for no reason. Uh, but speaking of Lee Camp, uh, Redacted Tonight with Lee Camp, that's another uh, good good news source that I've used, uh, especially some of his VIP interviews, because he gets some really cool guests, uh, some really cool guests that I'd, I probably can't guess. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I use him as a source uh, as well. Uh, and I know he's a comedian, but 
I mean, our generation has gotten more news from uh, someone like Jon Stewart than, you know, fucking Tucker Carlson or Anderson Cooper. So I think that trend continues because as comedians, as artists, um, you know, our particular goal is to challenge the status quo. Um, you know, we don't really have particular biases. I mean, artists do get bought out. Artists do get purchased by the corporate, you know, neoliberalism and this, like, you know, the industry kind of sucks people in. So th those people kind of work within an agenda, uh, sometimes knowingly, sometimes not knowingly. But for the most part, independent artists, true independent artists are going to push back against the system, are going to push back against the status quo. And that's part of the reason why we listen to people like Jon Stewart and Lee Camp and Dave Chappelle and Jimmy Dore, Graham Elwood, or, you know, Ron Placone. These are all folks uh, that um, uh, W. Kamau Bell uh, is another one there. Uh, these are all folks that I think are pushing back against the, the, the corporate system that's in place right now, uh, the, 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 the status quo, and they're punching up instead of punching down in terms of comedy. Um, and they are informing people and they are educating people through their comedy. They are opening people to new perspectives, new points of views, and new way of, ways of thinking. So I highly recommend those folks, Lee Camp, Jimmy Dore, Graham Elwood, Rumplecote especially, uh, they're, they, they all have, um, you know, these sort of outsider lefty television shows. Um, some of you are going to be like, why not John Oliver? And it's like, because John Oliver is kind of fucking neoliberal. You know, he shit on third parties for no reason. Uh, with, I mean, and, and didn't really have like a great excuse except that Jill Stein put out a weird folk album in the early nineties or some shit. Uh, and then he did a smear piece on Venezuela and he's been really condescending and kind of a prick about a lot of different subject matters. And, uh, I think he's one of those people that if you don't believe the exact thing that he believes, then he thinks you're a fucking idiot. Uh, so I don't, I, I kind of grew out of John Oliver. Um, Hassan Minaj, I've watched some of his show. Um, uh, it's fine. It's okay. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Hassan's style. The The basic template and concept of the show is pretty similar to mine, and I've been doing my show since 2013. No big deal. Not trying to brag there. Uh, <laughs> but the idea of picking a subject matter and kind of delving deep into it, um, you know, uh, it's just I don't have a multi-billion dollar budget, and I don't have Netflix to pay me. Um, I am... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm paid by you guys. I'm paid by the people that watch this video, become patrons, make one-time donations, buy tickets to my shows. Um, you know, uh, my backdrop is drawings I made that I think represent me a little bit more and, and a curt and like a, a, a top sheet. That's a curtain. I just don't have the budget that Hassan Minaj has. I think he's fine. I don't, I don't hate him. I don't, like love him a whole lot either so you know take that for what it is i watch some of his segments every once in a while but you know it, again it's like it's part of netflix y take that with a grain of salt you know uh, even w kamal bell he's on cnn so i'm pretty sure there's certain things that he can and can't say because of the network that he's a part of it's the same thing with john stewart there were there were things that he can and can't say uh because of the network he was part of that's just uh, that's just part of the reality of what it was. But John Stewart and I think W. Kamau Bell too are doing a really good job of kind of navigating the corporate entertainment waters and still providing like in-depth, um, you know, anti-establishment type material and pushing back against the status quo. Uh, Chappelle Show did the same thing, and you know. Part of it was like, had they restricted them, I think because of the popularity of their show, it would have looked bad for the network. And that's really what it, what it boils down to. Uh, another uh, great independent journalist that I like is Kim Iverson. She has a YouTube channel. 
Uh, I disagree with Kim on a couple things. Um, you know, uh, she's been doing some stuff with COVID that in the beginning I was really on board with. Um, but she's really on the pro Sweden train and, uh, you know, the, the evidence that I've looked up over the course of the last couple months is, and I, and I talked about this in a prior video, uh, is Sweden is not doing great. They're just not, their, their experiment failed essentially. Like it didn't work, uh, you know, and the argument that Kim presents in terms of this one subject matter um, is that they were predicting the exact amount of debts that they did get. So technically they're not a failure, but you know, like the other part of it was they were trying to achieve herd immunity, but they didn't because only 6.1% of the people, uh, have the antibodies. And so like this idea really didn't work. And so that leaves us with a big question mark in terms of like, what is the best way to, um, combat this, virus that we're that we're um that we're seeing in our world right now so i do disagree with her in, in certain things but that's okay um i think you you should be able to disagree with the people that you watch even if you watch them avidly even if you're a fan of them um you know it's okay to disagree just be respectful about the way that you disagree practice some discourse and i think i think that's part of the problem and it's it's why people will will discount news sources and uh, you know certain independent media uh, because we don't know how to have discourse. We can't sit there and say, well, yes, it's a lefty perspective and this, that, and the third. But have you seen this news story? What what are your thoughts on this? And we can sit there and be like, well, this is CNN, so they're kind of missing some elements that don't make that don't make their advertisers money. Uh, but, you know, let's let's take what we know from CNN and add what we've learned from the gray zone and let's figure out where where we can be, because to me, here's what I think this is. And they go, oh, wow, that's not you know, I, I, I 90 percent agree. With, you know, so even though I disagree with Kim, I can still respect a lot of the work that she does. She has some really great interviews. Um, she had a, a interview with a black conservative, a black Republican. Um, you know, she's had, uh, people that talk about the Fed and public banking on there. She's had, uh, she's doing a big thing with the West Bank that I have to catch up on. Um, but you know, I, I, she's got a lot of really great stuff on there. I disagree with her on this one particular thing and I think that's okay. Um, so Kim, Kim Iverson, I recommend checking her out. Uh, Hardlands Media, I just had them on my podcast. So Hardlands Media is fantastic. They're a Chicago based, um, uh, where is it? We're losing words, losing words. A Chicago-based media company, uh, journalists, independent journalists from based in Chicago. They do a lot of coverage about Chicago itself, uh, but they also cover a lot of other, you know, foreign of uh, foreign policy stuff, uh, electoral politics. Uh, they're actually going to be a big source for uh, some of the upcoming videos about electoral politics uh, that I'm that I'm going to be releasing in the next like two three weeks. Uh, you know, so, um, Minds Unleashed is another one. Uh, you gotta uh, kind of be a little, keep your eye on who's writing what kind of thing. Um, because some of it goes, it, it, it is sort of a, oh, like an open source journalism kind of thing. I like them. They put out some very interesting things. Um, and they bring articles and news stories to the light that I don't think people would have normally seen. Uh, Jacobin, very lefty, uh, kind of socialist paper uh, that I that I enjoy a lot, and uh, Dr. Richard Wolff, that's my favorite economist. Uh, I think you guys have heard me talk about Dr. Richard Wolff a bunch. Um, he is a Marxist economist. He is a uh, major critique uh, cr uh, critic of capitalism, um, and uh, he's awesome. I really really enjoy. Uh, the work that he does, uh, he's had, you know, Eleanor Goldfield, Lee Camp, Jimmy Dore on his show. He's had some, I, I mean, every time I watch his show, I find a movement or something that I'm like, that's fucking cool. Like, I got to check more information about that. Um, you know, it definitely, definitely an eye opener kind of, uh, kind of a, a, a guy to watch. He has a show called Economic Update. Uh, excellent show, excellent podcast. 
highly recommend it. And he's a really good source. Uh, he's a really good source of information. So those are some of them. Um, if you have a couple favorites, you should uh, drop that shit in the comments. Uh, I, I mean, I also listen, you know, to just to see what the corporate landscape is saying, just so we know what the, you know, it's like know what the other side is saying. It's like, so, I, I, you know, I'll read some, you know, the, the Nation magazine, uh, you know, um, I'll look at what CNN is saying or MSNBC, Fox News, that sort of stuff. Um, NPR, even the NPR is super corporate, you know, NPR is, uh, NPR has a lot of, uh, um, uh, of weapons manufacturers that are, that are funding it. Boeing is a weapons manufacturer. Uh, they have a lot of rich people that, uh, that donate to them. Like they're not listener driven. Fucking I'm listener driven. <laughs> Uh, but I will listen to some of them. I will I will use some of those uh, as sources, like the Guardian and the Independent and things of that sort, because it's important to know what this what the other side is saying as well, so you can kind of have a well rounded um, viewpoint of like, oh, this is how this is how you know this narrative is spun versus this, and you know let's figure out what exactly is uh, wh where exactly we're meeting in the middle. So it's important to do that sort of stuff. Okay. Uh, so let's move on to our second and final story for the day. Let me make sure I'm doing this properly. Uh, recently, you know, I have released a video on this channel about uh, schools reopening and uh, uh, what that means and how the, uh, the teachers union, the, specifically the American Federation of Teachers, is pushing back against the Trump administration um, in regards to uh, the schools being reopened. Um, I mentioned that the AFT, the American Federation of Teachers, has a uh, big document about how to protect yourself legally if um, you don't feel comfortable as an educator to go back into schools. Um, or, or even suggest that people should go back into schools. Like, what are, are there, are there um, legal protections in place that we might not widely know of? And there are. So they wrote that, and I do want to do a breakdown of their guidelines um, and their uh, legal protection plan. So uh, keep a lookout for that, folks. Um, I will be doing some of that. But, you know, this article, this comes from Payday Report. Uh, like I said, we'll be, we'll be talking about that. So since it has something to do with the labor movement, that is a good place for me to go and get news from the labor movement. And a Payday Report is fantastic. Uh, anyway, so Randy we uh, Weingarten is the president of uh, the American Federation of Teachers. Uh, and basically uh, what she said is um, there needs to be a combination of um, you know, online and in-person instruction. Uh, and I agree. I think Zoom classes, uh, though, look, none of this stuff is ideal, right? But we're not in ideal settings. Uh, we're in less than ideal settings. And we have to be adaptable. We have to be a little flexible. And we have to be a little amendable. Um, and that goes for the federal government as well. Uh, and... If that means that schools have to go to Zoom teaching, then it looks like schools have to go to some Zoom teaching. And, you know, one of the things you could do as far as in-person teaching goes, because you can't have large groups gathering. That's just, um, I think, a, that's, that's a little irresponsible. Um, you know, I, I have friends that do uh, outdoor comedy shows, and I'm and I'm okay with it. I don't know how comfortable I would be in this moment because of the rise in cases that we're seeing across the country. Had the had the number of cases kind of tapered out, I feel like I would be a little bit more comfortable with that kind of an idea. But right now, I'm 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 like, ooh, I don't know, you know, if this is the direction we need to go. Small gatherings usually are fine. Because you can, you know, it's like trusted friends and shit like that is like if you're sitting by a fire or on a porch or, you know, just hanging out with a couple people, like three or four people or something like that, it should be fine. Um, 
because you can know that those folks are responsible, uh, you know, and, and you know where they've been because they're close friends, so on and so forth. Uh, so in that same vein, you could hire a tutor for your kids, right? So that's kind of the in-person version of teaching mixed with, with the Zoom classrooms and things of that sort. And one of the things that could be done um, because you're going to have um, low middle income folks uh, within, the, within the school district itself is one of the things you could do is, uh, you know, you could have parents say, hey, why don't we open up a fund here and, you know, we can make it like a monthly fund and you could use that kind of like that Patreon model for, for community-based tutors. That creates a job. Uh, you, have a, you have a pool. You know, so let's say there's a family that's like, well, we can only throw in five bucks a month. But there's, you know, the rich kids down the street that's like, we'll throw in 50 or we'll throw in 100 or whatever. But everybody gets to be a part of this community and make sure that everybody's kid is taken care of. Uh, so you could have the community kind of come together to hire a tutor or, or multiple tutors, right? Because if, if it's if it's we're talking about a district, there's going to be a couple hundred kids uh, and one tutor for a couple hundred kids is kind of insane. But now you have a community pool. So let's say out of that community pool, you have some parents donating. Let's say there's like four grand a month coming into this pool now. Um, you have the Zoom education and then you have the in-person tutor training. And you can coordinate this within the community. But that's going to mean community communication. That's going to mean that you're, you can't have a bunch of people that are like, well, I'm paying this much and I think I'm more important because I make more. No, it doesn't. No one cares how much money you fucking make. We care about these kids getting a fucking education during a really difficult time. So shut the fuck up about your. No one cares about your paycheck. No one gives a shit. Shut the fuck up. It's kind of like having a tutor on retainer, essentially. Right, so if your kid's not doing good in math, maybe you get, you know, let's let's get little Timmy and little Becky. We'll, you know, we'll get them, get some masks. We'll go over somewhere, and we'll make sure that there's a tutor, and we'll we'll have some hands on, uh, hands on tutoring. That's a possibility. That's a possibility. Uh, it's gonna take some fucking work and effort, and organizing. But that's what the unions do. That's what they're fucking good at. The unions are good at organizing. So um, that's you can make that sort of stuff happen. And you can make that sort of stuff happen with the union's help, uh, with the teacher's help, and with the community coming together uh, and putting aside their bullshit. Now, Trump has uh, threatened to cut federal funding if the schools don't reopen. I talked about that in the video as well, uh, that he has threatened to cut federal funding, which is ridiculous. And, you know, uh, with, with this thing, where are all the people in uproar? Where, where are all these people that are like, they're defunding teachers, you know, all the people that were just like defunding the police. This is crazy. Where, I mean, what are we going to do about safety when they come out to defund the teachers? They're like, well, we gotta, we gotta make some cuts. We gotta, you know, where's the money? It's just, cr but when it comes to the cops, they're like, we got to just give them the fucking money. Like that's, where are those people at? Where are those people bitching about the fact that these kids and these teachers are not getting paid properly? Oh, we call them heroes, but we don't want to pay, pay, pay them like they are. We think they're important parts of society, but we don't want to treat you like you are. Where the fuck are these people that were bitching at me and all the other fucking people talking about defunding the police, talking about community policing. That were like, oh, it seems unreasonable. Maybe we should go to reforms. Yeah, reforms like shooting people in the leg. That's a reform idea that Joe Biden came up with. If three strikes are out, you want to do that reform? Where are these people? Why aren't they speaking up about this shit? Betsy DeVos, Secretary of Education and uh, sibling of uh, 
uh, what's his fucking name? The guy that runs that mercenary organization. Uh, Eric Prince. Eric Prince. He runs that mercenary organization. Contract Killers. Uh, you know, the woman that is, um, that is, uh, <clears throat> brother's, uh, brother is a contract murder. She runs the education department, uh, the secretary of education. She said the states are getting their budget cut by 20%. And, uh, you know, this is, this is kind of, uh, like the, the teachers have to do more work. They have to learn Zoom. They have to figure out how to translate all of their, um, th uh, you know, regular curriculum and regular teaching methodologies into an online digital world, which means they might have to work on presentations. They might still have to figure out how to uh, access new technologies to make sure that they're still grading things properly. There's a lot of new challenges and new tasks that are put into place uh, for something like digital learning, right? And again, not ideal, but kind of necessary right now. It falls into that category of uh, when states are cutting, cutting budgets by 20% here is uh, more work for less pay. More work, and, and we're seeing that everywhere, right? Entertainers are kind of feeling this right now because there is a lot of digital content going out there. And, you know, the, the, the notion that I have seen as someone that creates digital content is that there are certain people that will kind of look at something like that and um, and feel like it's less valued. Like the layman will, will make that uh, as a less valued thing. Um, you know, because it's digital. It's online. It's intangible. They can get it whenever they want. They kind of take it for granted uh, in, in that sense. Uh, but the true fans that really appreciate this stuff the people that i've you know i keep in contact with the, with some of these with some of these folks will message on a weekly basis and uh chit chat and so on and so forth the true fans the people that have donated the people that have become sustaining members um that share my content around um you know that that are that are taking part in that discourse we talked about earlier um those folks get it they know the effort and they know the work that's going into all of this stuff. And they understand that it's not ideal. And they are willing to fund that sort of stuff because this is something that they believe in. And first of all, fucking I super appreciate that shit. But if you want to translate something like that into, into the educational realm, uh, why aren't we doing that, though? Why aren't we having parents and, you know fucking community leaders and uh, politicians who believe in the value and power of education because they'll come out and say it every time they're about to get reelected about how important education is, about how important their teachers are, about how these heroes are teacher, uh, uh, th these teachers are heroes, right? And they'll fucking come out and say all this shit. But when it comes down to it, when it comes down to actually funding it, they won't. They won't. Where, what, what, is the, what is the issue there? Where are the true fans of education coming in to stand behind this, right? I mean, the American Federation of Teachers is a, is a real fan of the education process, which is why they are organizing and coming together to ensure that th these kids can have like a viable source of education in the fall when we're probably going to see a second wave. Where, where, where are the politicians push him back, you know? I don't, I don't hear a peep from any of these politicians that are looking at certain states and being like, why are you cutting your education budget by 20%? You should, you should realize that if, if, there, if the brick and mortar buildings are not being used, you freeze the rent on the brick and mortar building. You don't collect, maybe you don't collect as many property taxes for it, right? But you should be giving the teachers a little bit of a raise. You should be giving them hazard right now. Where are the politicians trying to do that? I have fans that believe in the shit that I do and that want to donate to my stuff. I have people that I believe in what they do and, I'm, and I want to donate to their stuff. I want to amplify their voices in some way. That was what the last segment was all about. 
where the politicians that believe in education so much that they are they that that they have they are not pushing legislation forward to try to increase the budget the federal budget of education in a really difficult time to ensure the safety of children parents and teachers 25% of teachers are at, at risk for covid if they go in 25% that's a quarter of the fucking uh, the education system that is at risk if we open schools willy-nilly without a plan like the Trump administration wants to So the American Federation of Teachers has released a 34-page document, legal document about how to use the Americans with Disabilities Act uh, or the Medical Leave Act to ensure that if the teachers don't feel safe uh, going into the schools right now, uh, they will not. And um, I think that's fair. I think if the teachers don't feel safe, if the parents don't feel safe sending their kids into school, they shouldn't, especially because in the fall we're probably going to see a second wave, especially because of that. Randy Weingarten, Randy Weingarten, the president of the AFT, has come out and said that she's, they're prepared to strike in, in the fall. I mentioned that uh, in the video I released on Thursday. Uh, if you're watching this the day that this comes out, uh, uh, I mentioned that that's what we're probably going to see. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of August we're going to see a really big teacher's action, a uh, pretty major teacher strike coming up. I wouldn't be surprised, especially if the budget's being threatened, the lives of kids are being threatened, there's really, it, it really doesn't seem like there's a lot of plan. Of, the AFT has a plan, by the way. The AFT released a plan on how to reopen schools properly. You know whose fucking job that is? The Secretary of Education and the CDC. That's whose job that is. To put out safety guidelines? And they fucking didn't. They, the CDC was like, oh, we'll think about doing it fucking later. They're procrastinating on their own fucking job to deal with the safety of this country, to deal with the safety of kids and educators and families and communities. The AFT has a plan. So if you want to support something for 2020, there you go, labor movement. Support that teacher strike that's coming down. Support the eventual general strike that's coming up. People want to shit on me because I don't want to vote for Joe Biden. No, I'm, 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 I'm going to go with what Ron Placone says. I'm for General Strike 2020. That's what I'm for. Where's that candidate? Seriously, I, I don't see any uh, Democrat or Republican. Nobody's fucking saying anything about this. Who's, uh, there's no politician coming out in supporting of the, uh, support of the AFT or their plan. They haven't talked about it. Fucking, I'm a comedian that's talking about it. There are very f few mainstream sources that have talked about it. Again, this is why people get news from comedians. There's the, what, what's my objective here? What, what's my bias? My bias is that I want people to be safe. I want a logical society. I want a society that's able to uh, participate in discourse, and we can't do that without a, a sound education system that teaches us dis different perspectives, that teaches us critical thinking, that teaches us how to question things properly. You can't do that shit if you're, if you're terrified of the environment that you're in to, to learn. You call it a brain drain. That's what Randy Weingarten called it, brain drain. Basically, everybody in this situation, if the schools reopen in the fall, everybody is going to be stressed out, every single person. Teachers are going to be too stressed to do their job properly. The kids are going to be too stressed to, uh, in a potentially unsafe environment to learn properly. That's going to affect their grades. That's going to affect what, what happens to them later down the line with college, with getting a job. Since so much of this shit hinders on your goddamn grade, 
and how much you do on some bullshit standardized tests. And now you're going to increase the amount of stress that, that they're in by potentially putting them in an unsafe environment. And now parents are going to be worried about that shit too. Parents are going to be worried about having their kid in this potentially unsafe environment, which means that they're going to be thinking about that in the back of their mind, and they're not going to be able to do their fucking job properly. And some of these parents are frontline workers, so they already have that level of stress coming in. Government's not giving them PPEs. It took fucking stores like Target and... and uh, Walmart and shit, like, two months before they gave them proper equipment. Or before they even helped them out with proper, their employees out with proper equipment. And now on top of that, you want to add their kids going to school in a stressful environment. Get the fuck out of here. The stress is real. But, I mean, in, in terms of neoliberalism and conservatism... Right, the Democrats and the Republicans don't give a shit about that. They don't talk about it. That becomes a pre-existing condition to them. So they can charge and make money off of that shit. Stress is real. When you're stressed out about certain things, especially finances and health, those are two big things that people get stressed out about a lot. And right now we are in a pretty heavy financial, financially stressful situation. Pretty heavy. And we're in a pretty heavy health crisis, too. Like, people are pretty paranoid about getting this virus. And this is going to affect the quality of the work. It just is. That's just what happens. It's unfortunate. It sucks. But they don't consider that to be a real threat. These are all kind of the periphery things that nobody really wants to address. They're manufacturing this problem. They're manufacturing more stress-related things. And they don't give a shit. If they did, there would be more people pushing the CDC to adopt what the AFT has put out there. Work in tandem with the American Federation of Teachers. Not just in a budgetary way, but in a safety, safety way. To say, okay, let's figure out a safe way to open the schools in the fall. What, are, what do we need to do in order to open schools in the fall? What do we need to do to make that happen? But they're not. And that's 100% going to lead to a strike. I think at the end of August, we're probably going to see one. That's my prediction. I, I don't know if I'm right or wrong about that, but that's my prediction on that. Um, and if you really want to support something right now, support the teachers' union. See what you can do to help them out. Figure out how to get the community together to support the American Federation of Teachers or any sort of local union that you have in your in in you know in your districts or neighborhoods or cities or whatever it is. Support them. See what teachers need right now. If you're a parent, I think that's what you should do. For this for the sake of your kids' safety or any of that sort of stuff. That's what I think. That's the end of our video. <laughs> uh, just two topics today. I know kind of a big, heavier subject matter towards the end there, but I hope the sources thing helped. I might try to do that in terms of like talking about people and um, artists and stuff like that that I want to amplify. I was doing that in the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and I and I would and I think I need to continue doing that a little bit more. Um, one of the ideas that I had too was to talk about like albums and music that I really like uh, that has been influential to me and talk about like just why and what the content of it is and why it's so important and why I enjoy it so much. Um, and there's going to be some live streams coming up. Like I said, there's going to be one with Jay and Katrina. Uh, that I'm very excited about. Hopefully we can make that sort of stuff work. I'm coordinating all that stuff right now, so be patient about when that's going to come out, but keep your uh, keep your eyes out, keep your ears tuned or peeled or just, it's coming. Just make a note. <laughs> um, but if you want to support the stuff that I'm doing, there's a bunch of links in the description of this video. Uh, you can become a sustaining member. 
that's a big way to help this uh, help help what I'm doing uh, out financially, especially because I've lost a major amount of uh, income by not being a touring performer right now. So I very much det depend on um, I depend on three things right now: uh, sustaining memberships, independent donations, one-time donations. Uh, and uh, ticket sales to the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows. Um, and then the fourth thing is purchasing or downloading an album or streaming an album. Um, and then I am going to have a merch store opening up pretty darn soon. Uh, so keep an eye out for the merch store that's coming as well. So, so there's some ways to kind of help out the shows, some ways to um, – support what I'm doing on a financial level. But if, if finances are hard, because I understand we're all kind of in a difficult time right now, um, just share, like, make sure you're subscribed to these channels. When that Rockfin page comes out, uh, you know, tune into the channel on Rockfin. Check out some of the stuff that I'm putting out there on Rockfin. Uh, I will make a video about that. I will probably send out an email about that. It's another thing you can do. You can sign up for my email list. Uh, so, you know, like if you're not getting notifications of our videos on YouTube, which I, I, I know I'm being throttled on YouTube pretty hard um, and on Facebook, too. If you if you subscribe to my email list on a weekly basis, you get, you know, all the videos that I'm putting out um, and uh, things like that. So, uh, yeah, subscribe to that email list, make a donation, become a sustaining member, purchase an album, come to a show. Come to a virtual show. Uh, those are all ways that you can you can help out the show. Uh, I appreciate the people that already do. Uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of taking a break. I'm reformatting the show right now, and I've already got a bunch of people that are asking me when the next one is, which is cool, which is exciting, and I really like it. Uh, warms the cockles of my heart, you guys. It warms those cockles. Uh, it's real nice. Uh, so the next one is August 7th, by the way. Um, I'm doing the Fringe Festival, the Providence Fringe Festival, July 30th and 31st. If you want to be part of that uh, live virtual audience, uh, shoot me a message, and I'll send you the you know the link and make a note to send you the the login details the day of the show. Um, you know, uh, so uh, all of this information is available on my website. Dates, uh, albums, sustaining memberships, donations, merch stuff, all that stuff is available right on my website. Uh, Chris Mohan, ha ha. Dot com. That's K R I S H M O H A N H A H A dot com. All right. Uh, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I'll be doing more videos like this for the time being. There'll be a couple of live streams coming up. So I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, and I hope you guys do leave some comments and I hope you guys do share this around. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. So till the next one, we'll see you on the road. Bye.